Good afternoon, Mr. Joel. How are you how are today? You? Good. How are you today? Excellent. I greatly appreciate uh, your time on this Good Friday. I hope. Uh, <laughs> I hope. I hope there's one ounce of helpfulness there. Ah, uh, I'm sure you can with. Uh, working right where uh, my whole project is going, is turning around, so. Wow. Let me ask you had, you, had you called me a couple, three weeks ago and left a message? I did leave a message to somebody, I don't know, because the okay. email doesn't say who, right. it, it just gives a number, like, right. and then wow. I left a voicemail. Yeah. Okay, yeah, could I, could I remember getting it, and then it kind of. Time goes by. It's appeared, and it's like, oh, and then I got a call from, or Matt sent me an email. Yeah. So, um, so good. I'm glad. I'm glad we we're able to connect. Yeah, I greatly appreciate it. So, sure. uh, just to give you a brief um, uh, overview of where, where where I'm at, the sure. whole thing. So, I'm attending UNT Dallas. Um, I'm uh, in the class with uh, entrepreneurship. And our professor gave us uh, the task to come up with a, a, uh, either a, a business idea, a service, or a product that we feel is needed in this world. Right. And now we have to all those like different steps that he's building on. And so there's several times almost every week we have some interviews that we need to do uh, to address a certain specific point and I'm um, now talking about the social cap capital so my interactions that I can have a network of people that I can build for this project so the project that I chose is a um, I'm originally from Switzerland as you may hear on my accent right I'm used to uh, Switzerland as the recycling capital of the world um, being used to almost recycle anything and everything because right. the thing that you don't recycle, you pay for it with your garbage. Right. They charge you for each bag. <laughs> right. <laughs> or right. The, so you do everything you can to save money and recycle everything that you can. So they have uh, very neat uh, collection stations. And so that's kind of my concept, what I came up with because we live here in a condominium complex that has a private service that comes and pick up the, the garbage. Right. And we now added a recycling service, but they're very limited on what they're taking. They do take most of it, uh, but there's a lot of things like batteries and stuff that they wouldn't take. And so we're ending up having to still toss things into the garbage, even though there's recycling places out there because we are not allowed to come to you all. Right. We're not um, paying or whatever reason. We, we cannot go and use Dallas Recycling. Um, so we're kind of limited on what, what to do. So you're kind of in, in the city of Dallas or? The... Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, right. we're really not that far away from, uh, from the one on Harry Hines. I, right. um, I'll be there in 15 minutes, I think, or less. Gotcha. So we will be really close and we probably would pay a membership fee if that would be available. Right, right, right. Be able to uh, get rid of that stuff versus having to figure out, okay, what are we doing versus just tossing it in the garbage. So the concept that I came up with having a recycling station that offers people the ability to drop things off like that. And so now talking into terms of social capital, um, the professor is asking for somebody that works in the industry, an expert that has the background knowledge and can say, hey, this works and this doesn't work. No, I don't know if you got the right guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, been, I've been, to, been to Zurich. Okay. Been to Zurich, yeah, and uh, great, beautiful city. And then also been in you know Germany. I know in Germany they have, or Europe, they have the Green Dot program. Right? Yes. You know that? Right. Yeah. Uh, I've seen the bags outside on the streets where it's picked up. Yeah. Right. There's, there's different systems that they have in Switzerland, and not everything is applicable here because at one point you would have to literally involve the government, and that becomes then a really, really oh, big yeah. deal. Right. Um, but, and and we we here in Texas, like, like uh, don't tell me too much. I want to do my own thing. So, exactly. <laughs> 
Oh, it's very true. It's very uh, true. I learned that quickly. <laughs> yeah. We get, so, here, we get people coming here from California and they'll say, you know, California, we do blah, blah, blah. Said, this is in California. This is what we do here. Welcome to Texas. <laughs> yeah. And they'll say, well, you should be doing this. It's like, well, you know, <laughs> we, we, we don't. Yeah. yeah. So um, what I had a little bit, so my concept right now, and, and I wanted to confirm with that with you, maybe you know, I had an interview with another uh, recycling station. They are focusing mainly on metal, right. uh, um, one of those uh, metal yards on the soft side. Sure. And the uh, manager there told me that the city of Dallas has put a a stop on any recycling stations or anything recycling within the city limits anymore. Have you heard of anything like that? I have, I have not, uh, I have, I have not. I know they have a lot of, you know, there's code restrictions and so forth, and it depends really on what you're collecting. And, you know, if you want to set up a metal yard, you know, the city, the city has, a lot of zoning zoning regulation you have to follow. So that might be one, but I haven't heard anything as far as the city. That's not saying it's, it's not, that's not saying it's not there. I just haven't heard of anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. So the other thing is that I, I was uh, imagining is um, when it comes to the recycling station, the station itself being a smaller place, Right. with uh, movable um, containers that people can throw things in that it still looks neat and nice because yeah. I know most recycling places that I have encountered, they look like um, uh, trash yards. <laughs> and have been our, have been our place. I mean, we keep it very neat and clean. Yeah. So, I'm, I mean, but it's still in, a, in a, right. an environment. And I remember when I, when I grew up and when I went and had, my recycling done, it was a, like, it looked like a little uh, um, roof over thing. And it was, uh, it was not the same. It, it just didn't look the same. And it, it was a scrap metal yard. Yeah, it's not as much of that yard feeling. It's more a little fence and then there's some tons and they, uh, you sorted it, you oh. sort it yourself and things are uh, kind of much smaller. Um, and then from there, they go and bring it to a collection station that is made right. a little bit larger. So that's more a concept that I was trying to focus on. Right. I feel is that something more feasible if you have more smaller uh, stations and they are, because obviously space in, in Dallas is expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, your question was, is that possible or doable or? What do you think versus having one central location, having multiple smaller locations with smaller containers that have to be switched out more frequently? Well, I guess the, the question, the, the main question is cost, you know, to set that up, you know, to, to set up a space like that. Because like you said, um, a lot of it is depends on the space, a lot depends on the neighborhood. There might be zoning regulations where it doesn't allow that. I know when we moved, we moved to a facility over by Fair Park about five years ago, and we wanted to put up a certain, uh, you know, recycling company here, and we had certain zoning regulations we have to follow, and allowed us to do some things, other things we were not able to do. So it's it's one of those things where it's a great idea, but I don't know if you ever heard the acronym Fabian NIMBY N I M B Y. Mm, no, it sounds that's great, but not in my backyard. You can do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, there. it's I want it's gotta be over there. Yeah. And, and so also I guess you look at the cost and what what's gonna be collected there, I guess who who pays for this? Because a lot of times, you know, the 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 you may want to collect say plastic bottles or batteries or whatever. Well, but is there enough revenue generated from the collection of that to pay for to pay for that? It, it sounds good to do it, but unless it's unless it's profitable, people aren't going to do it. Yeah. Because you know? because we've thought about that over the years. Why don't we have a collection side in another part of town? But by the time you add up what you're going to get and how you're going to process it and collect it and transportation, it, it just it's almost cost prohibitive. That's why you don't see a lot of it 
unless it's unless the city or the county support it. Yeah. So y'all are a private organization, or are you a city or like? No, we're we're a private company. Private, private company. Right. So, uh, and, and that's the challenge. Is you know the city, the city has their large facility in uh, at the landfill in South in South Dallas. Okay. Right. And they have a transfer station over by off of Harry Hines and Webb's Chapel. And in fact, they had. I think that. Oh, I so I confused you. I thought you all were the same because that's the one I was referring to. Yeah, it's called Dry Gulch, and you could go there, and people could put stuff in there. Well, it was a great idea. You know, when it, I think they started that in 1990. So was that 30 years ago? And I, I don't know if anyone even, even goes there anymore. You know, you could go and put stuff there. And that's the problem. That's what I was referring to as a. I, as a Dallas resident, I can't go over there because I'm not paying garbage or sewage to the city. So I'm not allowed to use it as an as somebody that lives in a, either apartment complex or condominium complex that has oh, really? when, yeah, you cannot. Interesting. So so you, you don't have a utility bill you can take and say, look, um, um. because the utility bill is through the entire complex. That's interesting. So as, as long as you don't pay separate garbage fee or whatever, right. and you have an apartment number on your driver right. license when they let you in, right? not let you in. Now, see, that's the, I think that's the, the um, transfer station. But if you go over there to Harry Hines, you know, they have, they have a, I didn't think, I didn't think they checked. And I'm going back to yours, you know, kind of a, an awning or or it's maybe 50 feet, 60 feet, 70 feet or so. And then, you know, they have bins where you can put your glass in there. You can put your uh, plastic in there. And it's been a while since I've been there. Yeah. But, but there, there is another place. And this is kind of interesting. It's, it's a place called Recycle, um, Recycle Revolution. I think mm -hmm. and in fact, I take my I take stuff there because there's things we don't have. And this is a it's a it's a small company. It's off of uh, hang on here just a second. I'll give you the name here. Um, yeah, it's called it's called Recycle Revolution. And they have a website. Okay, I'll I'll find it. What's that? I'll sure I will find it when I. When I go and oh, yeah, and over by, they're over by Love Field. Okay, they're that's between, pretty close to us. Yeah, between Love Field and Harry Hines, just north of Mockingbird, and it's a it's a small facility. It's a private private business, and they take they take cardboard. I take my glass there. We don't take glass there, and I don't put it in my recycling bin. I take my glass or I take my plastic there. We don't take plastic, and again, I don't put it on the recycling bin, but um it's a neat little setup and they they for some things they charge you know if you want to take your your toners your know, car mm -hmm. or say styrofoam they charge for that they charge like by the pound but they take it yeah and, and they're like the only ones i know of around that that take that so um it, it's worth it's worth going to and i think the lady's name the one's the name is maria i think her and her yeah. son, but um, and they do composting and they you know, recycle cardboard and plastic. Um, but it, it's it sounds similar, you know, design wise, conceptually, what you're talking about. Yeah, the, the additional twist that I haven't uh, shared yet is basically that I want to give as well an opportunity to people that live at the margin to help them to reintegrate them. So have a program at the same time, right. give them a work opportunity and help work on their issues that they have, that they have gotten to the point where they are. Right, like a re rehabilitation program. Yeah, kind of, but it, not necessarily because they were in crime, but because they are whatever, felt through right. uh, cracks of society and, and landed at the point where they're like, okay, I'm between a hard a rock and a hard place. So that was like the second layer to it 
to this whole idea that I had to address two issues that I feel that we do need to address, the recycling issues and as well helping people that have issues because there's plenty of job opportunities out there for people that just regular people that are not challenged, right. have challenges in their life and right. be aware, hey, we wanna give you a, an opportunity to find, find a way back. Yeah, and, and a lot of a lot of companies do that. We we've, we've we've tried that off and on throughout the years, and we you know it just hasn't been as successful as we want it to to be because it's it's a it's at least our it's a rough industry. You know, I mean it's 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 just kind of gets hot in the summer, cold in the winter. Uh, it, you know, it's it's it's, 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 it's kind of grimy, right? I mean, yeah. we're we run a very safe operation, but it's since we're all indoors it's a it's a little cleaner but it's 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 a lot of rough work yeah you know? and some folks you know just don't want to do it do it but another another uh idea is their uh, tarrant county which is the we're fort yeah. worth county they have a recycling center and i yeah. think they use folks either in uh they've been incarcerated or on workshops rehabs and they use them in their recycling center over there yeah and i don't know if you've heard of that or not or no i haven't been focusing here on dallas mainly and right um so i've been starting and my problem has been reaching people to actually have a conversation with gotcha. oh COVID, you can't just show up and hey right. Right. <laughs> i like right. to talk to you so, but, so, but that I, one but that one might be, you know, if you want to talk to someone that has something like that, you can put you in touch with those folks over there because they, they, I think, I, I don't know if they're in, I, I don't exactly know who it is, but I know it's folks that be, you know, have been, they're, they're, they're doing some kind of rehab or something. Yeah. Like, so let me ask you another question. How do you determine which products that you are accepting? Are you going off? Is there some kind of an industry insider? Like, okay, those materials other companies are looking for, right. and there will be enough demand. I, I had yesterday a conversation with a lady from Track, Track, uh, the decking company, TREK, yeah, uh, Vir Virginia, I believe. Right. And she pretty much said that years ago that uh, the plastic was bought. Uh, largely by China. And then a couple of years ago, China decided to just stop being uh, being the purchaser for them. And so then because of that, there was an overage on right. plastic. And so the price dropped, which was good for them, but then a lot of recycling stations stopped recycling it because right. we're like, oh, we're not going to be able to make money. Right. So how do you all determine which products are you going to recycle? Do you have a, re a source that you can, like, that will tell you, hey, we want this, can you start recycle this, or how do you determine? Well, it's a, it's a good question. You know, we've been in the business since the 80s, and we started out in, in, in paper and rags even, back then, clothing. Yeah. And so as our, as our business grew, you know, rags and clothing really wasn't, it, it was hard to get the supply, keep the supply clean, you know, because when we get material in, there's certain, there's certain um, guidelines we have to follow. You know, we're a middleman, so we have to make sure it meets the specifications of the people we're selling it to. And we weren't just able to do that with clothing. So we, we eliminated that and focused primarily on paper at the time. We had experience in that. So we knew, you know, the folks that were buying the paper, they had certain certain guidelines that we use. Because the, the industry, whether it be paper, metal, plastic, the folks that we call them consumers, you yeah. know, they, they have guidelines. You know, they're, they're more or less manufacturers. And for them to manufacture something where their raw material has to meet certain specifications. Mm -hmm. So a company like us has to make sure we meet those specifications to sell it. Otherwise, Otherwise you can't sell. I mean, that's the same thing if you go in a store, if I, if I don't have the product that the consumer wants if I sell whatever, right? Good flavor Coca Cola, nobody's gonna buy it. But if I sell the regular Coke, oh, all of a sudden I'm gonna sell it. Right. So we have in there, and in our industry has guidelines 
yeah. that's used throughout the world to um, that the mills follow. So you know we make sure we can meet those guidelines because if you can meet it and you have consistent quality, you're always going. There's always going to be a home for it. There's yeah. always going to be a home for it. So we realize on paper we can do that because it's it's a it's a very capital intensive industry. You have to have trucks. You have to have people, of course. Yeah, I have to have a lot of machinery. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and space as well. I mean, you need to storage it. You just you have to get it in. You have to get it in, sort it by grade, bale it, and then store it somewhere. So, you know, your inventory is always, you have to store it because when the mills buy it, they buy it you know, truckloads at a time. They just yeah. can't buy a thousand pounds. Yeah. So um, have you been to any recycling centers? Have you been to any? I, I mean, the only one that I one time saw was the one over on Harry Hines. Although okay. I have been very limited in uh, like ex exposure to recycling because it seems such a minor thing that is being practiced in the U.S. compared yeah. to what I'm used to in Switzerland. Yeah. So, I mean, if you ever want to come and see our play, happy to show you around. Just so you have an understanding of what, what uh, you know, how it how it works because i think as you as you you know prepare your paper or uh, for your class it's important to understand the mechanics of it right i think a lot of people don't understand you know for someone to set up a recycling center it, it's it's some of our equipment is like millions of dollars and you have to I'm make sure that. that was another thing that i didn't like connect with until i had the interview yesterday uh, that she said, yeah, we want the um, the people that will buy off the, the recycled goods, they right. need to pack it. They need to have it in some kind of a form. Yeah, they, they call it bales. Usually those are bales, right. but sometimes we buy uh, chips, like right. stuff. So how far are you all processing your the stuff that you uh, recycle? Is it like the minor stuff, just bailing it? Or are you even going further than just bailing? No, we're, and we're bailing it. We're, it comes in and we bail it. Yeah. So it has to, Cause that's how the mills want to package. Cause you know, they get thousands of, you know, they get truckloads daily of material. One, they have, they have to store it safely themselves. So when it comes off the truck, they have to stack it. Yeah. And you know, they're getting thousands and thousands of tons. They have to do it safely, and safety is a very big part of our industry. You know, it's it's, it's a it's a dangerous industry, and so they have to do it safely. And through their through their system, they have to have it in such a way where it can easily run through their their machinery. So you know, they'll get the bales, and I don't know if you've seen a bale or not, but they'll get you know hundreds of bales, and they have to dump them into a piece of machinery that will it's like a blender. In a, yeah, you know that. We, what they call repulping. Yeah. So they just don't do it loose. Another factor they want to bail because freight's a big factor. So they want to get as much freight on the much as many pounds on the truck as they can because they got to pay the expense to get the truck or the rail yeah. car for the rest of that. So have all these all these little factors involved and they all kind of yeah it together. kind of goes together. Right. Um, last question. Um, I have now had different interviews, different people that work in the industry. Um, and I hear different things. So are you all have to chase uh, companies to buy your stuff or is it easier? Is it actually the fact that they chasing y'all? Hey, we want your stuff. Don't sell it to this guy. Well, <laughs> so which, which way is the, the, communication going is it you trying to get rid of your stuff or is it them trying to get it first before somebody else it's it, it's both ways it's both ways the our business is reverse retail you know in retail you can buy a product and and here we tell folks we everything we have is like here it is april 2nd well it's everything is our plant it's already sold it's already sold and even yeah. even paper the metal we're not getting for another two, three weeks, it's already sold. You know, the mills have told us, you know, for the month of April, we want to buy X amount of truckloads from you. And I know, yeah. I know over time, here's what we do every month production wise. Yeah. So our trick is to go out and find that material. So for us, the biggest challenge is 
where the where's that material who has it yeah okay so you are on the hunt so you can actually uh, exactly. for, to for, supply for, your customers for us i mean our company of all i've always found the hunting part of it is more challenging because the paper mills the metal mills I mean, there's a lot of people out there that would like to buy our material. One is we're, we're very quality conscious. We have a good reputation in the business. We, we produce a quality product. We're, we're reputable. Our integrity is very strong. So like any business, our products in high demand. But there might be, you know, after a while, it comes up to where, well, if you're going to pay me X, well, the guy down the street may pay me X plus a little bit extra or this guy over here might be paying x minus something you know i got to pay for this so whatever money whatever revenue we get for that material i have to take out my cost and then go out and buy the material from somebody you know buy it at, at times you just have to buy actually stuff yourself you don't yeah, that's what that's what we do everything we everything we have here we have to go out and buy it because oh, there's I no see. incentive for people to to bring it and they know it's worth something they know the cardboard we have. They know the paper we have. They know the metal. It has value to it. And we work more with industry and businesses than than folks with like private with private uh, like private in, in right. Now we have a buyback center where you could bring your paper and cans and cardboard to us. Well, right now just paper and and cardboard. So we'll buy that from you. And but we're competing against you know, six, seven other companies around town that are buying that as well. Oh, I see. So people may bring it to us because maybe we're paying a little more for it. Maybe we're closer to them. You know, it's that's what I call the retail, reverse retail. Oh, okay. So, and I, I would think in Europe, they might, they probably have the same. They don't pay anything. <laughs> but you, you just don't want to pay and put it in your garbage bag. Right. Pay there. Right give it to you you can drop it off for free right and then you don't have to pay for the bigger garbage bag that's right, right. but see in, in in the u.s it's always been you know private industry has always been in it and you go back you know 150 200 years uh maybe not that far back but you know you always hear about the peddlers are walking around picking up steel and selling steel and rags and so that's kind of how it how it started so we pay whether it be commercial printers or people that make boxes or uh, grocery stores, you know, things come in a box or they make boxes, we pay for that scrap because we have people that can buy it. Well, we're competing also against, you know, six, seven other people around town that do the same thing. Ah, uh, I see, okay. So it's a little, it's a little different. And, you know, you're talking about, uh, you know, it's your apartment complex, you know, the city, I think, has they either have a mandate or something where they there's an ordinance saying that you're that's you know, why that's why we started now having the the company that comes and picks up stuff. Right. At the same time, they're very specific on what they will accept right. or not. Because right. obviously they have to turn around then too and sell it as well. Right. And if right. there's no market for it, then why collecting it? There, there's a market for it, but for instance, say if they put in, and I, I, it might be what they call single stream, where they're putting metal, plastic, uh, maybe glass, and and uh, in one bin or one container. Yeah, like a, we have like it's like big big bag, like bag. Yeah. yeah. So if someone puts a tire in there, or someone puts a garden hose in there, or they put trash in there, well, when when the company picks it up, if he sees that stuff in there, well, the the mills don't want a tire. So they just yeah. it's just contaminated. They just contaminate everything. So now it's all garbage, and it's very hard to police. So everything that people worked hard to put in, the company that picked up the material, they're not going to sort it. It costs them too much to sort it, so they'll just take it all to the trash. So I yeah. see. Okay. Yeah. They may they may try and sort it out, but again, it costs labor. It costs time yeah. to do yeah. it, and if you're only getting you know, say fifty dollars for it, but meanwhile you've got to put sixty dollars of labor into it. Why? Why are you? It's not worth messing with. So they'll just throw it in the trash, and you know, either bill the landlord back or somehow work it into their costs. 
So right. quality, quality is very, you know, people want to recycle everything they call wishful recycling, but not everything can be recycled because it's either too expensive or there's not an end use for it. Yeah. Yeah. No. So I uh, want to be appreciative and uh, for your time and respectful. So I greatly appreciate it. Uh, that, that gave me already a, a, a lot of information. This is a weekly assignment. So it's not like, <laughs> it's not a thousand page, uh, a thousand word uh, uh, paper I have to write every week. So I greatly appreciate for a lot of uh, food for thought that you give me um, that I can build in. If there's anything that I uh, need to follow up or there's an other assignment that comes, I'll just send you an email. Yeah. Um, but I think you gave me a lot of information that I can use and reuse as well again, just because yeah. it you have been a really big well of information because I haven't had really anybody from the direct industry that right. took the time to sit down with me and actually help me understand more how it works yeah. here in the US because it is a private industry here versus right. in Switzerland where I'm coming from, it's government led. Correct. So you have a whole other environment that you will work in. Right, right. Also, let me, yeah, I'm glad to help. And if you ever want to come down and tour our place, happy to show you, Mike. Also, I, I like to see, I just, just, uh, you, you made me very interested. Plus, I want to see, hey, wait a moment, I can go and bring my stuff over there. <laughs> I'll help <laughs> you bring you some paper. What to, have, what to have first, you know, because some things we take, some things we don't take just because. There's there's no money, there's no profit in it. So, yeah, no, I get it, but I have a plenty of paper every week. <laughs> right. so Matt Matt was here, you know. Uh, yeah. He was he was at our place, and let me give you a, a couple other things. Let me give you two websites. One is our trade association. It's called ISRI, and the acronym is uh, I S R I. dot I S R I. dot org. org. dot org. Okay. And that's our uh, recycling trade association. And okay. So you probably go on there and they may have some other information. And then, you know, you can see our website, which is texasrecycling.com. And yeah. you see our facility and, and you know, just kind of see what we do. Um, but yeah, any questions you have, whatever, just send me an email and happy to, to help, you know. I, I really greatly appreciate your time. You gave me a lot of real. Okay. <laughs> So that's a lot. You pull the cover back, like, oh, there's a lot there. Ah, let's close this Panera box. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. No, I really, really appreciate it. it gives sure. me a lot of food for thought, and I need to uh, uh, readjust some of the targeting that I had uh, thought of, and okay. we'll see where it goes from there. So I okay, perfect. Your time. I okay. wish you and your family a wonderful rest of your uh, Easter weekend. You, when you too. Finally, right. get on. Enjoy it and thank you again for your time. Uh, anytime, my pleasure. Thank right, you. Take care, Fabian. Good luck. Let me Thanks. know how it comes out. Thanks. Uh -huh. Bye.